Welcome to the River Wye, Steve Mayer here. This afternoon I'm going to show you through um, quite a critical tactic if you fish a lot of matches on the Wye and that's bleak fishing. But I'm going to show you how I do it and how to get the best from it. Let's get started. Right then, one of the reasons I've selected this peg today is for some close to the water. And that's really important when you're bleak fishing. If you're up here, you're not going to be as efficient. You need to be as down and as close to the water as possible. Now, what that enables me to do is fish shorter whips. So if I'm right down on the water level, I can fish two metre whip, or a two and a half metre whip, three metre at the most. Now if I'm stuck up here, up on the bank, I may have to use a four metre whip, and you're not going to be as efficient. You're not going to build uh, these big 40 and 50 pound weights six foot off the water. That said, you don't always have a choice. So longer whips, some days you do have to put up with it. It's a bit of an handicap. Um, so the closer you are to the water, the better your chances of a real, real big weight. This one I've chosen today is peg 48 on the ash path. It's a consistent peg. If I want to bleak fish, it's certainly one that I'd like to draw. Right, let's have a look at the terminal tackle we're going to be using today. I like to use a short, robust float for bleak fishing. Now I've found the best ones to be these Census Tito's. They've been around a long time and they've been well established on this river. There's all sorts of different patterns, slim floats, um, longer floats, bodied floats, but these seem to ride the Y better than any others I've come across so far. Now what I like to do is before I actually put the rig onto the uh, I'll put the float onto the line to make the rig up. I like to varnish these floats a couple of times. Now you'll see that it's just a, a normal clear varnish that toughens the float and that'll last quite a few sessions. They won't last forever but it will certainly add, uh, add to its lifetime. Now I usually make the rigs up on diameter 14 struffed. This is a hard line because uh, once I put the shot on, I'm not going to be moving it, I'm fishing with small balks. So I use this old diameter 14, which is quite strong. Don't forget we could be doing 40 pound of fish on one rig, or more. So this diameter 14 will stand up to the rig as a, a long um, session of catching fish non-stop. Now the hooks, I've mentioned before, I like to use a long shank pattern. Now I've found these Census 3065s to be very good. Uh, it's a black hook, it's also really big for its size, so that says 18, but it's probably a 14 in anyone else's uh, hook. Now with those, I'll thread the maggots on. And obviously I've showed you that, so threaded maggot, that's a really good hook choice. But remember, one hook won't last a full session. So when you've caught probably 10 pound, 15, 20 pound on one hook, uh, you'll probably find you'll need to change it at least two or three times in the session. They don't say stay sharp forever. And the hook lengths themselves, I store all mine pre-done in these boxes. Now that there we've got three and four inch lengths just in a six inch Preston hook box so they're all ready to go I keep that at hand on my side tray or in the uh, drawer of my box ready so it takes me literally three or four seconds to change a hook which is critical I don't want to waste no time uh, but also to change a hook will make you more efficient because you'll find your bump fish and that will tell you when to change the hook and don't hang around change it straight away the hook's not going to become sharper, it's just going to get worse and worse. So my advice is always change that hook when you start bumping fish. It'll make a big difference after five hours. Um, three metre line. With a 0.14 fit out. Usually me go to to start with. Uh, you've got a little bolt there of four number eight. There's a maggot on. Thank 
Grab the sh shank of the hook, pull the bleat off the hook, flick the rig out, and put the bleat in the keep net and feed. Pull the bleat off, let go, out of the swim in the net. Feed. Pull the bleak off. Hold the shank, pull the bleak off. Flip out, fish in the net, feed. Bleak for the wide, probably an ounce fish that one. A slippery fella. Or small in the fish. They do come in quite close, some of these canoes. To show you the rig in detail, these are what we call bulk approach. So there is a three or four inch hook length. And the float shotted with a small bulk. That one there is four number eights. That just sits above the knot, pushes down onto the knot there. Set the time, throw it in the magic. Everything needs to be smooth. Don't rush anything. So if you start rushing, that's when you get into tangle. So just be nice and smooth. Always find feed in front of yourself and put the rig in almost up from the feed. Watch it feed in about 11 o'clock as, as the river's flowing downstream. Down, we're going from, uh, from right to left on this bank. So I'm feeding the bait at 11 o'clock. Putting me rigging at 12. Feed all the time. Keep feeding a dozen maggots at 11 o'clock all the time. That's the discipline with this is feed and repetition. I only kind of came into fishing whips about four years ago. I never actually used to like bleak fishing. It was only till a wise man told me at Starport the one day um, 
big pier pond, you tip the beach. The 21 pound of bleak beats 20 pound of rope. And that always is stuck in my mind. So I realised I've got to start learning to bleak fish to be effective. It took a while, in about 12 months to get to grips with it, but once I got to grips with it, I drew a nice bleak peg. The river had come up and it was rising during the match. My weighed in just short of 47 pounds that day. And that was at the time one of the biggest bleak weights off this strip. Um, and that really got me into wanting to do it better and more efficiently. There's an handful of people caught 50 pound on this river. Uh, I'm lucky in that sense. My best weight's 53 pound at least. I've had quite a few upper 40. It's not always like this in a match, it will start slower. Some anglers like to flick the fish off. I prefer to one-up them. When you're flicking fish off, they just go everywhere. They don't always land in the keep net. I'm only using a standard rim keep net today. I'm unhooking. I'm just putting the rig back out and then put fish in the keep net. See? Just a repetition. And I will come down here, just try for the winter lead and just get myself up to speed. Not difficult, but I like to keep myself well oiled, I suppose. Good term for it. That happens occasionally. <laughs> so many here today. I'd love to draw this peg on the map. Now these chest waders are great. The reason I like them is it keeps you dry and clean. This is actually quite messy when you're catching these. You don't really have time to keep drying your hands. But at the end, if you have a normal bib and brace on it, it'll actually be plastered in, in maize and bleak scale. And the good thing with these baz waders, I can just wipe them clean at the end of the session. I strongly recommend them, they're really good.
just show you the um, the rig attachment. I use a piece of 030 line, which is trapped between two pieces of latex tube. This is some old pole elastic. It's a number eight hollow. What I do is I tie a little loop in the bottom. That's then trapped. The knot of that is trapped under that piece of latex. Then that's twisted all the way down the pole tip. Then there's another two inches of latex there. And I leave about half an inch protruding over the end of the pole, over the end of the whip tip. So it's a solid carbon flick tip. Now on the air, how I attach the rig, that's just, just a figure of eight loop, which was um, trimmed. So it produces just a knot. And that's what I attached the, uh, the rig to. The rig's attached to this knot here. It's really reliable. And this creates a standoff, so you don't get no tangles or wrap overs with this, with this way of um, attaching the rig to the whip. I'll show you in more detail how this is uh, put together. I'll actually put one together for you and show you how I do it. But, but yeah, that's how I attach my um, rigs to all my whips with flick tips. I know now I can catch these at two metres and straight into two metres. Um, this is a 4 by 12 float on the two metre rig, um, which is four number nine, four number nine shot in a little bulk. And this one's a three inch up then, it's shorter up then. So you have to be careful of that. Coming close, the stamp can sometimes be not worth catching. You just be wary of that. You might think you're catching a weight, but unless the bleat are that size or bigger, it's not worth fishing in close. Fish within reason where you're going to catch the biggest fish efficiently. That's three and a half metres, three and a half metres. Two metres, good. But you probably, a lot of cases here, you cut back from the main flow. One of the reasons I picked this peg today is because I've got flow almost off the bank, which is great. What I'm looking for is flow as close in as possible, so I can fish as short a whip as possible. I don't want to be fishing four metres or stuck halfway up the bank. So that's a two, well, cut back, that's probably a 1.8 metre rig. Notice how I like everything at hand. Today I've chose to refuse a bait waiter. Not too many contraptions around me, just a bait waiter with some maggots and hemp. definitely suffering see on that shorter line so I am going to go back out they're too small I'm actually going to go out back out onto the I'll try a two and a half meter line you don't have to be catching little tiny ones You're not actually putting any weight in the net Remember, always keep feeding. Don't become a lazy feeder. So it's a 
threaded maggot that could catch you 20 fish before changing the bait you'll see the hook length the hook is tied with a bit of a tag so without cutting the, um, the line right off always leave about a centimetre of line on the tag after I've tied the hook that helps stop the uh, bleak from blowing the maggot up the line which does help just save some uh, match time over five hours.